early ministry was huge. There were there were crowds that followed from all over what was the northern part of Israel, and they would even come from the southern part of Israel. They would even come from areas that were across the Jordan River, and even areas that were north of Israel. And they would they 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 had heard about his healing. They had heard about his miracles. And they had heard about his different way of teaching, and they came from every, everywhere to hear him speak and to see his miracles. So the crowds were huge. I mean, he had he had thousands of followers at this point. But I want you to know that that he understands that some of those crowds, some of that crowd, isn't genuine. And that's why he brings up the parable, the parable of the sowers to the disciples because he's about ready to send them out to preach. That happens just here in just a few days or maybe a few months after this teaching. And he knows he's about to send them out, so he's preparing them for what they will find. And what we find when we share the gospel is not everyone believes. Not everyone receives it. Some, some might receive it for a while as something that's exciting, but they don't see the, receive the truth deep in their hearts, and, ch- and their hearts are not changed into the, into the image of Christ. We're getting all kinds of stuff going on here today. So, the sower simply sows the Word. But I want us to understand that we don't know what the shape of the heart is on which that seed will fall. And, and so what does Jesus do to kind of encourage them? If you'll look with me on down the chapter there in Mark 4, often when Jesus taught, we have these, do you guys have like paragraph headings? And that's why it's way to, it fell off my collar. I don't know how to fix that right now, so I'm just going to... It's really loud now, Kathy. The mic was way down, so can you turn it down a little bit? Is that better? Still a little too loud. Testing. All right. We're getting there. All right. So I want us to see that these parables that he tells in chapter 4, they're all related. And so Jesus didn't, he didn't often, that's the problem with our paragraphs and our headings, because we think there's something new being taught. And it's really not. Jesus is simply going on to teach a little bit more. First, He teaches about the the sowing of the seed. And He says, your job is just to sow it. Right? Don't worry about where it's falling. Just sow it. Well, then He encourages them. Now we're off all together, I think. It fell again. I'm sorry. Just turn this one on, Kathy, and let's be done with this for today. Is that better? Yeah, there we go. So, first he tells them to just sow the seed, but because sometimes when we sow and people don't respond, we can get discouraged, right? Because that I, I really believe that's why a lot of us as Christians don't tell people about Jesus as much as we ought, because we feel like they're not going to believe us or they're not going to receive the truth. Okay, And so we worry about that. And Jesus simply says, your job is to sow it. And then to encourage them, look at verse 21. He said to them, is a lamp brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed and not on a stand? And what he's saying is, because, just because they may not receive it, don't stop telling it. Just because they may not believe you, it doesn't, it doesn't excuse us. We still have a light that we have to share with the nations. We still have a story that we need to tell people that can save them from eternal damnation, right? We, we have a responsibility. And he says, listen, don't hide your light. I know it may be discouraging because sometimes we share the gospel and there doesn't seem to be any fruit. But don't quit sharing. Keep sowing the gospel. You may be in an area where you're sowing on nothing but hardened path. And the seed never takes root. But never stop sharing because eventually God may soften a heart and the seed may take root and sprout and grow. And what does He promise about when it does sprout? That it's going to increase 30-fold, 60-fold, or 100-fold. In other words, when you share the gospel with somebody and they receive it, they in turn may share the gospel with somebody who may receive it. And it's exponential growth of the kingdom of God. There's a story 
about Billy Sunday, who was one of the great evangelists in the Great Awakening in the late 19th century. He was saved by a faithful Sunday school teacher who week after week proclaimed the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that Sunday school teacher had no idea what that one life, how that one life would impact the kingdom of God. But Billy Sunday went on to proclaim the gospel and thousands of people were saved by his ministry. We never know. All we know is that we need to be faithful to share the gospel. But Jesus isn't through teaching on this subject. Look down at verse 26. This is really powerful. I want you guys to hear what Jesus is trying to teach. First, keep spreading the gospel. Two, don't give up. Don't hide your light, but keep shining your light no matter what the result. And then in verse 26, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day and the seed sprouts and grows. But listen, he knows not how. When we share the gospel, we don't know what's going to happen, and we don't know how God transforms lives by it. i got to stay right here. I forget. But the truth is we know that it happens. We know that the gospel transforms lives and saves people for eternity. We know the power of the gospel because God does a work. All we do is spread the seed, but God does a work. Look on down in verse 28. It says the earth produces by itself. You hear that? The earth produces by... I don't care how good a farmer you are, you cannot make the seed sprout. You can water it, you can nourish it, you can do all that, but there's no guarantee that that seed will sprout. The word there that it says that the, the, um, the earth produces by itself, that by itself is where... That, the Greek word there is where we get the word automatic. It just does it. And, and what, 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 what God is trying to say is the Word of God is the seed and it will grow on its own. Amen. Well, here's, that's, that's our labor, is to keep sharing the gospel, to, to let the seed do what the seed does. What does God tell us back in Isaiah? That when my Word goes forth from my mouth, it will always accomplish what I intend for it to accomplish. Right? It will always accomplish. So that's our labor. Well, what is our limitation? Our limitation is, is when we look at this parable that Jesus is telling, he's talking about the soils, and that's really the point of, of this thing. Notice that he doesn't identify who the sower is. He doesn't tell us because it could be anybody, anybody that shares the gospel. As he's, as he's teaching that, this to the disciples, he's the one that's been sowing the seed. And guess what? Not every seed fell and produced. Even when Jesus, right? The, the heart of the gospel, the very reason we tell, even when he was sharing it, not everybody believed. There were, we find out in John chapter 6, we're going to look at a verse there here in a little bit. We find out that the disciples began to leave him when he began to preach harder messages. The disciples, I should put that in quotes, right? His followers, all of a sudden, he wasn't popular anymore because their seed hadn't really taken root. And so what he says is, listen, it's about the soil. We sow, but we can't, we can't change what's in somebody's heart. We, we can't determine who's going to receive. I can't beg somebody enough to receive the gospel to make them do it. Right? I can't say it in a, in a polished enough way. I can't, I can't wrap it in a pretty enough package. If their heart is hardened, their heart is hardened. Right? Remember what Jesus tells the disciples not long after this when he sends them out? He says, listen, when you go into a house and they do not receive what you say, what do you tell them when you leave? Shake the dust off your feet. Now that doesn't mean Jesus is not telling them to give up on them. Right? Because if he had, then we wouldn't have, have had 12 disciples because they all did stupid stuff early in the ministry. If, we had, if he had, Nicodemus would have never gotten saved because the first time he met Jesus, he was as lost as he could be. But here's the truth. Here's what he's trying to say. Don't let it bother you. Let it go. Don't, don't hold on to that. You were faithful to share the gospel. You were faithful to plant the seed. Now let God do His work. But don't stop planting the seed. 
It may be that the next time you share it, God has worked on his heart to soften that heart and to prepare the soil so that he might receive it. Keep sharing the word. Keep planting the seed. Here's what John 6 65, and this is this is right before all of his followers begin to leave. John 6 65 says this, and he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted to him by the Father. See, there God has to work in the hearts of somebody for them to receive the gospel. Now just a few verses down from this, I challenge you to go read in John chapter 6 today. Just a few verses down from this, it says that many of the disciples begin to, to walk away at that point. And then right after that is when he asked the other ones, the, the, the original 12, he says, are you going to leave me too? And remember what Peter said? Lord, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. Right? But God has to work. We, we have a message that brings eternal life, but we can't cause somebody to be saved. All we can do is share the Word. So our labor is to cast the seed. Our limitation is we, we never know what kind of heart that seed is going to land on. And I can't make your heart soft enough to receive the Gospel. Only God can do that work. But I can be faithful to share the seed, to cast the seed. And one of these days, God's going to soften a heart so that when the seed is cast, it takes root, right? It reminds us that salvation is only of God. The earth produces the seed by itself. The Word produces salvation in the hearts and lives of people on its own. That's why the Gideon ministry is so powerful. That's why you hear these wondrous stories about people just reading the Bible and changing their lives because the Word is enough. God doesn't need us to preach. God doesn't need us to share the gospel, but He's told us to. And we're to be faithful. We are not the way to salvation, but we are the way that God uses to show people the way to salvation. Romans chapter 3, if you'll turn over there with me, this will be our last point. What is our light? What is our message? What are we supposed to tell people uh, in order for them to be saved? What key things, if you're going to share the gospel, if you're going to talk with a friend and they need to know how to be saved, what are the key things that we cannot leave out? What are the things that we must help them to understand in order that they might be saved? I had Michael, uh, I don't know if you noticed that we sang He is Lord two weeks in a row. I had him do that for a reason because that, that song is the story of the life of Jesus. That's our message, right? That's our message. Just tell them, because in the story of Jesus, all the truths that, that we're going to look at here in Romans 3, just telling the story of the life of death and resurrection of Jesus tells all these truths that we need to know, that people need to understand to be saved. Romans 3, 21 to 25. We know 23, by the way, very well. We know it by heart. But we need to see all of what Paul's trying to teach here. But now, the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God for, put forward as a propitiation or as, as a satisfaction by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in His divine forbearance He had passed over former sins. The first truth that people need to understand in order to come to salvation is that sin has separated us from God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is no exclusion. Everybody that's ever lived except for Jesus Christ, right, has sinned. And even one sin is enough to separate us from the holy, perfect, righteous God. Even one is enough. 
But how many of us can say we've only sinned once, right? I mean, we've sinned multiple times. We do it We do it every day. Even after Christ has changed our heart, we still have hardness of heart. We still have so many things going on through our minds. We still say so many ugly things. We still do so many stupid things. We still have sin. And it's for that reason that somebody from outside had to do something. We couldn't do it ourselves, right? Because sin separates. And we just talked about that in Sunday school, how there's a wage that if, if, if salvation isn't a gift, that means that you earn it. That means that you've worked for it and you earn it. But if it's a gift, it means you cannot earn it. And what does Romans 6.23 tell us? That what we earn by our sin is death. We don't earn eternity. We earn death. That's the wage that we receive because of our sin, because sin separates from God. That's the first truth. The second truth is that salvation is all of God and not of man at all. It is solely by grace. It is a gift. It is something given. Unless we be, we be swelled with pride, we remember that it's not anything that we've done. It's all of grace. We can't do anything to earn God's favor. God has to offer His favor freely, and we receive it. It is all of grace. And if someone is, needs to be saved or someone's going to be saved, they need to understand that their sin separates them from God and that salvation comes wholly from God and not by us. By the way, just kind of a little side note here. I think sometimes as Christians, we've somehow, not that we've earned salvation, but we deserve God's grace because we were pretty good people. Listen, we don't deserve God's grace any more than anybody else. And you may have been a great person before you met Jesus in human standards, but your sin still separated you from God. My sin still separated me from God. And you might be a mass murderer, but God's grace is still offered to you for salvation. There's nothing that we earn. It's all a gift of God. Salvation is of God. Sin separates. Salvation is a God. Salvation is a gift because of Jesus Christ's payment for sin. Someone once said, Jesus Christ couldn't have paid for sin because then salvation isn't a gift because somebody had to pay for it. And I think that is the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. It's a gift to us because Jesus paid for it, right? If I, if I buy you a gift, it may not be free to me, but it's free to you if I give it to you. Salvation is a gift, not earned, but simply given. Acts 4.12 says this, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And that name is Jesus. We need to proclaim the name of Jesus, bring people to glory. Sin separates. Salvation is of God. Salvation is a gift. And finally, salvation is received by faith. Salvation is received by faith. We simply believe. We, tr we lay ourselves at the feet of Jesus and we trust Him for salvation. It is faith in Jesus, the person, that He is real, that He lived a sinless life, that He died on behalf of us, and that He was raised the third day right. But also we receive by faith His promise of salvation. And we say, Jesus, You're enough. You're all I need. And then God saves. So as we share the light, remember, keep casting the seed. Don't get discouraged. Keep casting it. Remember that God is working a work in someone's heart that you may not see, but it may result in their eternal salvation. And remember that the light is the story of Jesus, which tells us that sin separates us from God, that, that salvation comes from God, that it is a gift freely given by God, and that it is something that is received by our faith. That's what we need to share. That's the story. That's the message. Keep sharing it. Let's pray. Father, we love You. Lord, we thank You for the Gospel. And Lord, I think everybody here understands that we did not deserve Your gift. What we deserve is eternal, eternal, um, eternity in hell. But what You granted through Jesus is eternity in Your presence. You've washed away our sins. 
Lord, we stand in front of you in righteousness because Christ has given us His. And Lord, as believers, we just say thank you. You bring us to our knees when we think about what you've forgiven us of and what you've destined us for. But Lord, we, we also want to be faithful to proclaim that message. Lord, help us to see it's not a complicated message. Help us to see that there's no guarantee that it will be received every time. Help us to see that it's all of you, but you've asked us to be faithful to just tell. And I pray that you get us to that place. We love you and we pray these things in your name. Amen.